Bueno, muy bien. Eh, gracias a todos por venir. Les recuerdo, eh, en primer lugar, un comentario al lugar que la clase de profesor que ahora voy a presentar eh, será dictada íntegramente en inglés. ¿okay? Creo que ya estaban avisados de esto, pero por las dudas se los recuerdo. Así que les pido por favor a todos que apaguen los celulares y que eh, presten la mayor atención posible porque realmente debemos seguir la, la conferencia del profesor en inglés lo que puede a, a alguna contar un poquito más. Así que esa la atención entonces que pedimos en el día de hoy. Así que sin más empiezo, voy a hacer una pequeña presentación del de, de, de profesor, que también del pasado que nos visita, y, y ya la voy a hacer en inglés para, para darle paso a, a la conferencia. So, to start, welcome Professor Hakarin Strymon, also ambassador of Thailand in Argentina with the Protect, my friend Protect, and also uh, to bring the Thailand students that are, in the, that are here in the university. Uh, you know, Professor of the University, university is really a pleasure to welcome here uh, because it's important for us to learn more about Thailand. You know, it's a very far country, uh, and also it's important to know about great investment opportunities between South American countries and your country in particular. Uh, you know, the regime of the professor is really large, so for that reason I'm going to only to uh, read a small part of the museum. I want to tell you that Hakarin Swaikman is the Dean of International College of the University of Thai Chamber of Commerce. It's a university created by the Chamber of Commerce in Thailand. This is uh, uh, really important. He is the Executive Director of CNA, Great Center of the University of Thai Chamber of Commerce. He is created in Bangkok. Uh, his working experience is very wide. So I'm not going to read it uh, completely, but I want to tell you that the professor has a large experience in teaching and presentations and also in investigations. He speaks Thai, of course, he's from Thailand. Uh, he also speaks Japanese, Chinese, Burmese, Vietnamese, French, and a very bit of Spanish. But not, not, poquito. not necessary como para speaking Spanish on the presentation. Uh, the Professor Swaimon uh, will talk to us about Thailand in terms of key facts. So uh, we're going to know about the geographical location of Thailand, we're going to know more about people and society, we're going to know more about government, economy and infrastructure of, of, of Thailand. He will also present, and this part is really important, uh, to present the trade policies and the trade relations of Thailand. And finally, he will be presenting about the business opportunities and investment policies in Thailand. Uh, so, thanks, uh, to Professor Rohit, uh, with your presentation. At the end, we're going to have a space of questions, and uh, the ambassador of Protec, ambassador of Thailand in Argentina, is going to uh, finally close with some points. Okay? So, professor, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, right? So, um, I'm quite excited, okay? This is my first time in Uruguay, and the first time teaching or sharing about my country in your country, okay? So, it will take around, I think, less than one hour for me to really share what's important information on my country. And at the end of the seminar, at the end of my talk, I hope that some of you here will go to Thailand and visit my country. Okay, that's the thing that's why I'm here today, right? So, before I start, uh, I actually I'd like to thank uh, Ketika University of Uruguay and the uh, ambassador uh, May Tha for inviting me here. And this is my really, I don't know, unimaginable to come to your country. For a Thai person to come here is not that easy. And it's actually, it takes a lot of things to come here, right? So, now we're going to talk about Thailand, right? You see, where is Thailand, right? Long days, it's Thailand, okay? So, uh, let's see, this land is T-H-A-I, land, right? Thai in Thai language means freedom. And why is it like that, right? In the history, uh, during the, what? Colonization era in Southeast Asia, 
Thailand is the only country in Southeast Asia that has not been colonized by Western power at that time. So our neighboring countries like Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, or Myanmar, were, or Malaysia, or even Indonesia, were actually a colony of those uh, uh, what, French and British colonies at that time. That's why Thai people are very, very proud that we are the land of freedom. Okay, that's why we give ourselves the name Thailand. Okay, this country. So we have this royal palace, and the uh, temples, where it's, I think it's different from the church here, right? And when, when I uh, stepped into this room, I was, wow, my God, this is so big. And I don't know, this is really, uh, you know, different experience for me. Okay, so uh, for keep my excitement, right, being here with you, it will take some time, right? So, and I will give you something about Thailand before um, I share about my country. I like you to really think and, and, and think uh, for a while, right? Why are you here tonight? Why you spend your time here tonight, one hour, listening to someone you don't know, right? And you also don't know what you're gonna get out of his speaking to them, right? You see? So, before I begin my talk, ask yourself, what you think you're gonna get out of coming here today, okay? So, it might not be only about Thailand. It might be about something that give you a really something surprise, okay? So let's see like what, what, what I can share with you today, okay? And, and of course, it's important to know the, what, the key facts about my country, right? Uh, Thailand side is about 5,000 uh, kilometers, right? We speak Thai, like for example, right? How, how do we speak Thai? I give you an example. You may say, hello, hola, right? We say, salat di krab. Sawati Kra is for males, Sawati Ka is for female. Okay? So that's how we speak our language. Right? Okay? And then we are religious, totally about 95% of Thai people are Buddhists. Okay? Because of course we have uh, Christianity, Catholic, or Muslim in our country. But the majority of people are Buddhists. Okay? And the population in Thailand, we have about 67 million. Right? And 67 million is what? Uruguay have 45 million, right? So we have a lot of people, okay? <laughs> we quite crowded, like a lot of people. And our capital city is Bangkok, whereby we have about, let's say, in the statistic, about 800 million only in Bangkok, okay? So imagine how big and how you know, a lot of people are living in the States, only one city, okay? And our currency is bad. Baht. You have peso, right? Yeah. We have baht. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one baht is equal, uh, one dollar is, 20, uh, uh, is about 30 baht. Okay, so you can see it's uh, a bit different from. from and uh, our neighboring countries, we have here is Myanmar, or now they, before they call Burma, now they change the name to Myanmar, right? And then Laos. And here in Vietnam and Cambodia and South East Malaysia. So we actually situated in the very center of Southeast Asia, or mainland Southeast Asia. Okay. Have anybody here have been to Thailand before? Anyone here? Very few, right? Okay. Uh, where is that? Okay, you there for traveling? If you ask Thai, Thai student, anyone been to Uruguay? Same thing, right? Okay, so it's normal. Okay, so that's why I'm here. That's why you're here too, right? To make sure that next year, when someone comes and speak of Thailand, then we have a yeah, 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 big time. Okay, so that's how we want to build our relationship among, uh, between our countries. Okay? And um, since our, in Thailand, we used to king and queen or royal family. So we call ourselves the full name is King Dong of Thailand. Right? And our government type will be constitutional monarchy, which means we have constitutions, we have democracy, we have monarchy under the constitution. Okay, so we still have our king and queen 
and our king uh, Rama the Nine, actually the longest, they just happened here in Argentina or other countries in Latin America, right? Before 1997, Thailand GDP growth rate was more than 10%. In the World Bank record, Thailand has the highest economic growth rate in, that time in the world, right? But because of uncontrolled growth rate, we had a big, you know, economic crisis, it collapsed in 1997, and the bar was devalued, and you know, we had not paid a lot of debts, so we, we really came back again in 2008, right? So now, 2012, we come back to 6 to 5 percent of the growth rate, okay? And uh, so, uh, just uh, point out some of the important facts here, right? For example, the inflation rate. Using inflation rate in Thailand, it's less than 5%, sometimes it's 3 or 2%. Inflation rate in Thailand is very low compared to other countries. I heard in Argentina would be, I don't know, 30, 40%, right? Very high percentage. So our, our government has done very well keeping uh, inflation rates between 3 to 2%, right? Okay? And the uh, one thing that I want you to do, uh, share with you right, about unemployment rate in Thailand. I don't know how many percent here in Uruguay, right? In Thailand, the unemployment rate is very low, less than 1%. Meaning, 100 people working for the workforce, right? Only less than 1% has the job. So, meaning in Thailand, job is really a lot of variable. Many people have uh, work to do, okay? So, that's why our unemployment rate is very low. Okay? So that's about Thai economy. And, and you might have heard about ASEAN, you know ASEAN? Uh, no, right? Okay, anyway, we, I will talk about that later on. Okay? And the change rate key is very stable in Thailand. Okay? We don't cheat a lot, right? Uh, before I go to this one, if you have any questions, you can ask me, right? If you'd like to me to clarify something about Thai economy or something that you'd like to know further, so you can, you can you know, raise your hand and ask me a question, okay? Because it is too quiet, I'm quite a little bit stressful, okay? <laughs> so, let's say you can, hey, you can really talk about this, so I can, you know, really share things with you. Because this, this information only I share with the business people. So they're more focused on the company, business, and everything, right? Because we're also from the Chamber of Commerce, so we're more interested in business utility. Okay? Right? What is family? What is your background? Coming from which faculty? Business. Business? Okay. No, from all business school? Okay, good, very good. You know when I talk about business, right? Before I go further on this. I give you a question and then I ask the people. What is business for? Okay? Business is for what? Can you think about that? You might write, write your thesis on this. Okay? What is business for? So, when we look at high GDP position by sector, and we, we, we divide it into agriculture, industry, and services, you will see that agriculture becomes less than 12% or 12% of the Thai GDP, meaning Thailand has transport itself from agriculture based economy into more manufacturing based economy, right? So that has been done within 20 years. We start industrialize our country around 1985. And has been what well, transform a lot of uh, Thai but basics industry into more manufacturing industry. So that's why you can see that now uh, Thai uh, manufacturing industry are 44 percent almost half of the Thai GDP and also service industry as well, right? We have one of the biggest tourism industry in the world. Last year, we had tourists coming to Thailand. You guess how many tourists come to Thailand last year? How many tourists coming to Thailand last year? You guess how many million? Two? Five? Five million? More? Ten million? More? 50, that's, that's in France. <laughs> How many? 25. 25. Yeah, we have about 28 million uh, tourists coming to Thailand last year. So it's uh, a lot of people, okay? So, tourists.
Processing elastic time is one of the biggest and burning a lot of money for Thailand. And mostly they come from where you know? China. India, right? If you see from the map, Thailand is between India and China. India has 1.1 million people, China has 1.3 million people. So with these two countries, that's why we have a lot of tourism, a lot of business between, uh, from those two countries. Right? That's why we, our service industry also grow almost 50% of total uh, GDP position of our country. Okay? And then, what would be the main industry in Thailand, like right? agriculture, all sales industry, retail trade, banking, education, food product, hotel restaurant, auto vehicles, and real estate. I see some of the you know, uh, truck, you have truck. Here you have high house, right? From Toyota, uh, pick up truck from Ford. Maybe those trucks are from Thailand because most of the Japanese manufacturing manufacturers, they moved their factory to Thailand the last 30 years. They, they were facing what gain appreciation, right, in the cases. So most of the Japanese manufacturers, they moved their products, they moved their factory to Thailand. So Thailand now is the top 10 world producer of automobile. So you don't think Thailand can do that, right? No, mostly the famous for tourism industry, right? But Thailand actually now, uh, have factory from Mazda, Isuzu, Toyota, Uzumita, right? All the Japanese companies, okay? So that's why uh, modern vehicles become also very important industry and have a big share of what, uh, GDP in Thailand, okay? Right. So, our exports, right? We export about 229 billion. I think Uruguay may be less than 10 billion, right? Something like that, right? You know? But you export to your every country, from Argentina to Brazil, right? Or to Europe. For us, we trade very little. We know little about you, we know little about us, okay? But anyway, there's something growing in the future, right? Okay? So what, what we export here? We export electronics, computer parts, automobiles and cars, electronic appliance, machinery, footwear, rice, and rubber. So it's quite a diversified industry in Thailand. We're not just based on agriculture products, but also manufacturing products or industrial products, right? And who we export to, right? You see our big friends, our big uh, trade partners are China, Japan, USA. For only these two countries, almost 30% of our total export, right? So meaning what? Chinese develop Thai product, Japanese develop Thai product. And the USA also developed our products too. Okay, okay. So uh, now we trade. In the past, right, 20 years ago, USA or the United States used to be the biggest trading export destination for Thai products. Now, and as you know, China is growing a lot. Now it's become the world's second biggest, right, economy in the world after the United States, right? So that's why they now we call it the uh, biggest trading partner for Thai uh, export products. So we also be trading Hong Kong, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, right? And what we normally import? When you start a business, right? If you want to do trade with a country, the main thing to look at is that what they import most, right? Meaning what? When we see that what they import, meaning what they need in their country, right? If you want to do trade with Thailand, you see what Thailand import. Then you know this product they are more technical. Okay? For example, we have capital goods, raw materials, consumer goods, and fuel. Right? And we import mostly from Japan, China, and Emirates. Our Emirates actually is oil and gas, right? So we import a lot from uh, Emirates, in Malaysia, and the United States. Right? If you look at this, Thailand has very what? Control. Very well on that trade balance. We have very little of deficit or what surplus, and also we manage very well, right? Thailand, I think we similar to Uruguay. We are a small country. When we are a small country, we need a lot of friends, right? So something happened with our friends, okay? That's why we need like free trade agreements with people uh, around uh, us. Our friend in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, India. 
Yeah. And this is what I mentioned earlier, is ASEAN. ASEAN is different from Asian. ASEAN is Association for Southeast Asia Nation. Okay, so it includes 10 countries in Southeast Asia. So it is ASEAN as a group. We have the free trade in China, Korea, Australia, New Zealand, India, Japan, right? And we also have this in, in, uh, sorry, with Peru and Chile, right? We signed agreement a couple of years ago with uh, Peru and last year with Chile. So we hope that you know, through this free trade agreement, we will have more trade about our country and also especially the country in Latin America, which is very new for us coming here. And for Uruguay, I think it's still far away because we're in the Mercosur, right? Mercosur. Meaning Mercosur, you have everybody must agree to be friends with China. Then we can do trade agreement. So we make a little bit of obstacles, right? To do trade agreement. So in, for trade agreements, we have good friends in Peru and Chile. And for the future, we will do Uruguay. And I don't know what we can do, but let's explore the opportunity, okay? So this is actually the uh, what trade agreements that Asia have with uh, what Latin American countries, right? So you will see that this is Pacific and this is Atlantic. So this one has to cross over, it takes more time, right? You see, it takes a lot of time to, to do this. So we start from here. Maybe in the future we can go across Chile, Peru, and do the trade agreement to right here, Uruguay, uh, Brazil, and Argentina. Okay, but. At the moment, we have only with Chile and Peru, right? Um, what we share, see, here, is the same ocean. And then, sorry. You can see that it's very far away, but we still do something together, okay? Because now we have all the technology and all the Facebook, all the what, computer, everything, right? Make things, the world is smaller for you, right? You see? So now we can have friends in Thailand and talk to them in time, right? Not just like the past, okay? And now uh, we have tra uh, air transport, we have natural gas, we have all this, right? I think Thailand has equipped itself to be ready for foreign investment. We have attracted a lot of foreign investment to our country, and we have done a lot of also our investment, right, to neighboring countries in Asia. But we don't have any investment in Uruguay as yet now. Okay, so I don't know in the future it might be, but I cannot guarantee when it will be uh, some you know investment from Thailand to Uruguay or Uruguay back to Thailand at that point, right? Okay. And you see, if doing business in Thailand, right? We check with the World Bank. Doing business meeting is the record. It's about how easy to start business in Thailand. Okay. If you look at the statistics, competitiveness in Thailand we number 38 out of 125 countries in the ranking. Okay. So we are not too bad, not too good, but we do okay right, right now number 38. Right? And we start business, we are number uh, what, 91, or meaning it's not that easy, right? And dealing with construction, getting all this, right? But if you look at objective investor, Thailand has done very well, right? Number 12 among the all the 128 countries. Meaning, if you invest in Thailand, we protect your money from your investment. We make sure it's not just grab your business, right? We, we have this one goal and regulations to make sure that you can save the business and the business out of our country. Yeah? Law enforcement contract, right? So, Thailand is a place where uh, it's believed that it's easy to be, do business with, right? And one thing is about Thai people. Thai people are very what, friendly, you know, like, right? Friendly, you smile. Uh, actually, uh, if you heard about Thailand, we have like the land of what, thousand smiles, right? We smile all the time. Sometimes we get angry, we smile too, right? So it's a land of thousand smiles. You will see Thai people smile all the time, right? And I think that's the good thing about Thailand. We are welcoming foreigners, right? You, if you are black or white, you are Chinese, just come. You can be your friend, right? See? That's the good thing about Thailand. We have very less discrimination about you know, black or white, you are foreigner, you are European.
Kemudian you are from Latin America, right? Everyone is but our friend. Okay, that's something that attract a lot of tourists and also foreign investors to China. Okay. And this is some of the tourist attractions. Right? This is our grand palace, this is our floating market, right? And then inside. Like, I give you some better. Is we have the best uh, what? We say we, we are very proud, okay? We have the best beach in the world. What the best, okay? It ranked in the top 10, right? So, and visiting Thailand is so easy, I think. You can fly, but not easy from here, of course. <laughs> if you decide to go, you have to spend one month or two months in. Not just Thailand, you go to Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, it's the surrounding country, right? So, this is the place that you know, most of the tourists are going. This is uh, one of the islands in the south of Thailand. And the food, I don't know how you eat food here. Is it spicy here? Your food? No, Thai. It's not, not spicy, right? In Thailand, it's a lot of spicy food. Okay? And this is a Thai restaurant here. We have two places that we have two Thai restaurants in, in this city. Okay? So this is the food. It's very spicy. It's my favorite. And this, uh, you have seen the, the movie The Beach, The Beach, right? This is the way they film The Beach, the, the, the Caprio uh, in, in the, what, 10 years ago. This is also the place where, you know, attract a lot of people who love beach, right? And this is, uh, what, uh, our national elephant, the uh, animals, right? And, yeah, you can find most of the places in Thailand, right? And people, you know, when I was in the United States, when I was in high school, they asked me, Hey, Jacqueline, in your country, do you ride a train to school? I said, yeah, maybe sometimes, you know, but not every day, right? But you cannot blame because you don't know Thailand, right? You see? But because the image coming out is always like this, people riding elephants. So they, and some people ask, do you live in the tree, in the jungle? And then I said, oh yeah, maybe you love jungle, you know, so, right? So that's something that, about Thailand, of course, we don't write it from the school, okay? <laughs> Just to make sure you don't get confused, right? And um, this is our natural elephant, right? our natural uh, animal, okay? The point of me being here today, not just to give you this hard fact about Thailand, okay? And I, I hope here I have some of my Thai friends here, you know, they're, they're from Thailand here, that's uh, from uh, AMS here, right? They, can you stand up? Yeah, they're, they're young people from high school. And then, welcome there, please welcome there. Right? that chose to come to Uruguay to spend one year as a change student here, okay? So they are very special, actually, right? Yeah. And we hope in the future, you can join this exchange program for Thailand as well, right? In the areas, right? Or you can even visit our university, spend six months or one semester in my university. Okay, so let me know, I welcome you, and you can even study in our university. Because we also uh, taught in English, so you have no problem, you know, study in the university in Thailand, right? Okay. And I want to just share a little bit about what what I do this work, right? Yeah. I spoke about Thailand in Peru. I spoke about Thailand in Argentina, in Brazil, in um, Mexico. I'm going to Mexico again in June, uh, in June, right? To really share about my country about what we have to people in, in Latin America, right? And from my, I've been around, people ask me about, you know, what, how is Uruguay, how is Argentina, how is that and that, right? What I can share with them is that, I, number one, I like the food, okay? Number one, right? And I think I like meat, I like, uh, what, seafood, right? And I like the architecture. I like the old buildings, and I, I was very happy to what I was able to see uh, what uh, was the name Colonial this morning. That you preserved it very well. I was very proud of that. It's very beautiful. Okay, so and 
I enjoy seeing this and I also like to study about your history, how people settled here in, in, in Uruguay, the Portuguese, the Spanish, and the people, right? And then they asked me, uh, if I have to go to Latin America, which country or should I go? I said, I don't know, because I've never been here many times, right? Yeah. But, I, but I think, if you have the opportunity, right? Yeah. And I think as, if you go on one time in your life, right? I have been in many countries. I live in the United States, I live in Japan, I live in Hong Kong, China, travel around the world. I'm very, I don't know, lucky person, okay? But from looking around and being around the world, I think uh, that's what uh, made how my degree, right? We develop our skill that we finally we can see that we just human being, we all the same. We share what vision, we share love, we share affections. I think this is the thing that we can use as a common thing for us to really love each other. It's not you are Uruguay, I am Thai, right? We just human being. And let's see what other human being has to offer to you and what you can contribute to another human being as a human being, right? You see? So when I come here, I realize this and I enjoy meeting all of you. I enjoy what sharing what I have with you, right? And I'm also a teacher at university, right? And I, I, I like to teach and I spend so much time teaching people. And you know what I teach them? It's not only this, of course, knowledge is very important, right? You cannot invalidate knowledge, okay? But some other things about, not about knowledge. And something that, let me give you something to think about, okay? Before you go on, right? Find out something you don't know that you don't know, okay? See, it's you like very much. That's your thinking, that's your thinking, right? Find out something that you don't know that you don't know. Because something you know, you don't know, you know where to find, right? But something you don't know that you don't know doesn't exist in you. Okay? So maybe if you find that you don't know, you don't know, something great might happen. Right? You know, uh, Steve Jobs, right? You know, Bill Gates. They found something they don't, they don't know, right? You can imagine right, when you were young, you cannot do Facebook, you do the iPad, right? But they found those kind of things, okay? So this is the thing that it's not just about knowledge. It's about finding something. And I'm 41 years old now. And, you know, after all this year working as professors, as, you know, people talking around and talking around the world, I found what? At the end, I found what I want to do. When you only find what, you know, when I was young like you, I didn't know what to do. I just go to school, study, have fun with my friends, and then hope one day I get a good job, right? And then, yeah, have a good family, and then send them to school, and die. Okay? That's all I can do at that time, right? But then when I start looking into myself, I found what I want to do. And I have to get up early in the morning and do what I want to do. And I hope at the end, right, sooner or later, you're lucky enough to find what you want to do. Okay? And what you want to do might be loving going to Thailand and see some new opportunity in my country. You never know. Okay? Just like these two uh, students from here, right? If I have time, can you come and share what you, you know, uh, see about what you know, you know? You can speak English or you can speak Spanish, Spanish or English, right? Yeah? Hola, me llamo Guillermo Monsafati, soy de Tailandia, uh, yo vivo en Bangkok. Alright, ok, en in inglés, <laughs> es parte de mi bonito. Ok, en Bangkok es la capital de Thailand. Well, en Bangkok hay like, many, like, many people, like, very busy, but. Okay. People here is very friendly. It's very different. Like very small here, like 
people smile to me and then I smile and I, you know, like I said, like all out to everybody. Like I'm so friendless. It's like, wow, here is very friendly and another thing that I see here is like um people like they share everything together. Like when I'm in the in the class because I go to high school here and when I'm in the class, my friends they're body like body snacks and we share together and oh it's so nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's something similar with Thai people. We were taught when we have snack, if we eat alone, you're a bad guy. If you have snack, you check. Okay? So in Thailand, maybe similar with the group idea, right? The Thai people are generous. We, we value generosity. We value contribution to other people. Meaning what we share, you know, what we have for other people. So that is something that's similar between what Thailand and Uruguay people, right? So it's something that Cuban is a good thing, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's about it that I uh, like to but that I because I think it's more important that you know you ask me questions and what you like to know about Thailand or anything about your life, about your study. Right, you can ask me, so that thing I can share more. Right, so I think I keep these sessions for uh, questions and answer, and also uh, the class is also here and you can share some other things. You know, you can ask uh, about Thailand or other things. So, right? Okay, so I will keep these uh, sessions right for uh, what? Not you don't have to ask questions. You may share. Yeah, I like. I don't like you. Or I like what you say. I don't like what you say. Let's be sharing, right? But just just say something so I can respond to you. What you get out of coming here tonight, right? Okay? So, is that okay that you have anything to ask? You can raise your hand and give you a microphone, okay? You uh, can take care of the investments, but uh, it's not very easy to start a business in Thailand, so then you have like, some contribution. You know what I mean? Um, uh, it's not that not easy, but you know, when you compare to other countries, that's what you get, right? For example, you register your business in Thailand typically one week. So in one week you can start your business then. Okay, so many things is very what conducive for investment. But because of that we have a bit of political problems, so you might perhaps you know damn them on the Western climate in Thailand, right? So that's why it's like that right now. So we have to accept right now that we have a problem with the politics in Thailand. Okay? Thanks for question. Any question from Please, I'm here only one hour with you. Okay, just you know, let me know what you want to know about my country. Thank you for the talk. Uh, first, I would like to what's the first thank you. Uh, after, I would like to know if you can explain me a little bit about the inflation and the employment rate because both are very low. So, how do you manage to have both inflation and employment low? Um, Thailand has a very special character type people, special characteristic. We are the most entrepreneurial people in the world. It's not I said, okay? This institute, they have a research, and they research about people all around the world. And they have a conclusion that Thailand is the, has the highest entrepreneurial in the world. Meaning, we want to start business. When we were young, we were trained in business. When we start the school, we still train us to do business. So we see a lot of small businesses in Thailand. That's why we can keep unemployment rate very, very, very low, because most of them have their own business. And if you ask students, right, especially business students, you ask them, if you are into them, right, almost 5% will say, I want to have my own business. Because the character of Thai people that they want to they don't want to be controlled, they want to get free, whatever they want to do. So they want to have their own business. That's why unemployment rate is kept very low, right? For inflation in Uruguay, what, what is the inflation rate here? Five percent. Yeah, we never have to experience five percent. The highest we give is in, in, in the crisis, right? But five percent is still manageable, right? But, but still a lot of it, okay? Thank you for the questions. Anything else? It doesn't have to be in your own business. Yeah? And if you cannot, uh, if you're not
make sure that they get what? They can survive, right? But actually, in this way, you might get them even sweeter because you help them so, so much. You know, when you, when you have baby, right? When, you, when they, what? When they fall, you help them. When they fall, you help them. They can walk. So make sure sometimes they can fall. Then they can walk later on, right? Okay? So that's, that's about uh, Thailand when we always you know, open the policy. Let me add, to add something here. Um, the important point about this is competitiveness. It's the uh, policy of the government to make sure that our industry is competitive to others. Um, and that's why we can compete with, with our uh, rivals. Somewhere else, or even open them for them to come invest with us. Um, this competitiveness is, is uh, I guess, it's the key for uh, doing business in China. Um, uh, the government did a lot of things, uh, increased the So that the industry can reduce the price, the, the, the uh, expense, the cost. Um, it's, it's why we can have a few others, especially in other developing countries, which also have the low cost, uh, especially for, for the, the, the cost of labor. Cost of labor in Thailand is high, but we have to reduce some other costs. That's how we approach it. And, and like the, the professor said, the SFE is also important. I don't know if you know that the cars produced uh, in China is come from small SMEs. They uh, manufacture small parts. And that's all. So they, they send to, to the bigger to factory and produce bigger parts and then the symbol has come. That means the real core of the economy is the SME. So SME is the, the important thing that the government uh, was trying to is trying to, to Enhance the productivity. So, yeah, uh, and SME small businesses, right? It accounts more than 90% of total Thailand business. So, it's a big, you know, uh, a very important uh, what, a sector of our uh, um, SME small business. Yeah. Any here? <laughs> First of all, thank you for the presentation, I think it was excellent. Uh, I know 30, 40 years ago, uh, the economy of China was basically uh, a little down the products, such as here right now. Uh, and I want to know how was the transition between that economy to the economy that China has today, which is basically the industry. I'm afraid, sure, okay, because this is the story, and I actually, my PhD thesis is about this, okay, but I'll make it short. Uh, Thailand before 1985 was totally agricultural based economy. Okay? And then because of, uh, I think because of Japan, uh, yet appreciation 1980. So the Japanese the factory, Japanese business, they're looking for the what? Manufacturing site for their product, right? So they moved into Thailand. And that time, Thailand is the only very few country in Asia that we have what we call a bitter memory with Japan during the World War II. Okay? So other countries they fought, they killed people, whatever they did, right? So they have not a very positive uh, what, uh, what, positive thinking about those countries, right? About Japan. But Thailand is a place where we didn't have history that kind of bitter memory with Japan. So Japan chose Thailand as one of the most important manufacturing base for Japanese industry. So they brought in 
car industry, electronic home appliance industry, all kind of industry that that what that needs labor intensive, that they move to China. And the government of China also uh, has policy to industrialize our, our economy to be more manufacturing based uh, economy. So by 1985, and we kept our currency stable for almost 20 years. One bar was equal to five, one dollars equal to five bar almost 20 years. It's very stable. So it's very what, a good condition for foreign investment to come to Thailand. So by 1985 to 1997, 1998, Thailand had transferred in 10 or 20 years to become what, one of the very um, sophisticated manufacturing or industrial base in the uh, industrial uh, economy in 1995. Right? After we, but after we have extent of the economic crisis, right, and then, you know, to another 10 years to come back, right. But because of that, uh, foreign investment, we draw a lot of foreign investment from Japan, United States, and Europe, okay. So Thailand become more industrialized because of what? Foreign investment. We, 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 we did a lot of work, a lot of uh, benefits for foreign investment to uh, invest in Thailand. Well, first, thank you for inviting us because we are hosting family and we profit from this great opportunity to learn. Um, I'd like to know what are the traits of the labor force that make Thailand an interesting place? What the cultural traits? You know? How, because if you put your business in the hands of the local people. Uh, labor in Thailand, we have very not many strong labor union in Thailand, okay? So people don't go uh, protest on the street, a lot like some country in Latin America, okay? So, in Thailand, our labor is, is, is the Japanese, according to Japanese investors, we are very obedient people. Meaning is that A, 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 right? Yes, A, B, B, right? So, we put obedient, and we are not that kind of, what you know, go or protest on the street. So, and the Thai people are very uh, easy to accept something new, meaning something from foreigner, from new training, right? So, that's why the kept Thailand was very, what, it's uh, attractive, right, for foreign investment uh, uh, due to the uh, labor, uh, the uh, friendly labor force in Thailand, right? And, but it's not only good things about labor in Thailand, okay? We are not aggressive. We are very obedient, but somehow we also not we don't we not too ambitious. Okay, we say okay we have this enough. That's all we do. We not ambitious to be better and better. Right? Okay, so that's another problem facing by foreign investment in Thailand. But of course, for basic labor, we're very good. We're obedient and we like to learn things and we are very good. Okay, I think that's that. Anything else from? Have we got someone from the back? From here and there? Yes. Okay, halfway. Um, hi, I'm Fernanda. I'm signing the machine. Fernanda. Yes. And I'd like to know if there is any scholarship in the Okay. You want to go to Canada? In your bachelor or master? Bachelor. Okay, S on the D. Okay, I'm the D. Uh, master. Master. From uh, my university, yes. I'm the D and I can give, give scholarship. Okay? Meaning, <laughs> meaning free tuition and some money for you to spend in a month. Okay? Right? So, if you're interested in coming to Thailand, you can see me after the seminar. I give you some contact and email every day. And more some details that about how you in Thailand. Or if you don't want to go for like a degree program, you want to go for the exchange program for one semester, you also invite to come. You don't have to pay extra that university. You pay one FN and then you spend. And I think in uh, Thailand it's much cheaper uh, living cost than Okay, so much cheaper and then you, you will enjoy it. Okay, there are a lot of things for you to see in Thailand, right? 
thank you, thank you for being interested in, in going to Thailand. Right? And let, let me know if I. But if you have, right? If you have your brothers, sisters who wants to go to Thailand for undergraduate study, I also have a scholarship for you. That you can. You know, now I have six Brazilian students study at the university. We have one Mexican student. Now. Okay, so, and we also have a change program with the uh, University of Sao Paulo in, uh, in Brazil. We send three or five students every year to spend one semester in Sao Paulo. Okay, so if you would like, you're interested to go to Thailand, and then you might you know, have an opportunity, you can talk to Professor Ignacio here, right? I might give you some more information. We, we are quite inside our memorandum of understanding later on that, you know, we can. Our my students can come here too, and, and you guys can come to our university in Thailand. Okay, so that's the thing that we can, you know, at least there's some result coming out from this today's seminar, right? I think that's very important too. We start from small, and then, you know, later on something might like happen in the future, right? Okay? Yeah. Hi. Um, when doing a business with the time, in which cultural aspects do we have to be careful about like um, business gifts or body language? Oh, uh, okay. You study often something? <laughs> okay, so. Mm, but I, I'll give you basic ground rules, right? That Thai people, we value someone, understand our culture. So when you do some business meeting with Thai people, you might start learning Thai language. You can say Sawadika, Kaukumka, that make sure that all your interests in our you know, country and our business, right? And and I think that's the number one thing. You must take a little time or more time to learn about our culture and our language. So that it shows your courtesy, right? It shows that you are interested, you you know, see it's important for you to learn our language, right? Just like I come here. So we learn our, uh, each other's language. And also, um, in business meeting, um, I think you normally Thai people will be talk, right? We would like to relate ourselves with somebody that you know. You know, you might relate yourself, oh, I know that A person, B, B, and then so we have the same common friend. So it gives you like, you know, oh, I can be friendly with you too, you see? So in Thailand, and like to visit Thai people, make sure you might find someone that they know in their circle. And you also know that in their circle too, right? So it's easier to open doors, right? The welcome you to do business with them. Okay? That's the basic ground rule, but there are many things that you need to know about do business in Thailand, okay? We have actually five, six Thai people tonight, tonight right? They are actually from uh, Buenos Aires, no? they, they work in Buenos Aires, but just they happen to be here tonight, so they just came and then, you know, give me some support here, okay? So I'm, I'm quite happy to see Thai people here, it's, it's quite not easy, right? If you go to Bangkok, Uruguay, Uruguay, you know, very few, you don't see, very few, right? We, we don't have Uruguay embassy in Bangkok, we, we have embassy in Malaysia, but they might consider open their embassy. Reopen, we used to have one, right? Reopen your embassy in Thailand very soon, okay? Any other questions for Kuntas? <laughs> okay, more questions? If you have more questions, well, I let me uh, conclude and let's uh, conclude at the end, right? First of all, Muchas gracias. Thank you for your time uh, coming here tonight. And you know, your time is very important. We have, let's say, 100 people here. Multiply by one hour. I have 100 hours of you already. So that's a lot. Okay? So thank you very much for your time being here. And allow me to share about my country. And allow me to really, you know, do what I love to do. Okay? Of course, if I speak the same thing, but no one is here, it is no meaning. Okay, so you make my life and my talk today 
meaningful. So thank you very much for that. Bye. Finally, only I want to. So we had a lot of questions. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, today there was a great audience, uh, and I want to ask you one final question. Then uh, the pastor will close with some words. Uh, I want to know, uh, Professor, uh, what's the opinion of of Mercosur and the opinion of South American countries from the perspective of Thailand, academicians, governments, or businessmen? What do you think about Mercosur, about that process that is uh, crossing the Uruguay and other countries of South America? That's one question. And the other question I want to know is about the, the role that it's playing uh, Thailand in ASEAN process integration. And it's going to change at the moment. So that's the question for you. So I, I will keep my, my, what I, my opinion also, what I have knowledge about Mercosur, okay? And maybe this, right? For Thailand, Mercosur, we actually, as the Southeast Asia, we took, and that's what before, we would like to have uh, what, a free trade agreement with Mercosur. And then, some, some, I think, and then the post board and post board until now, okay? So we haven't talked much about our collaborations, right? And what I see in Mercosur, we have big, two big countries, right? Argentina and Brazil. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure I should say this, right? But if Argentina and Brazil really can work together, I think Mercosur will be a place where we can do a lot of collaboration, okay? So that's why it's been delayed many, many times, right? Because of maybe the internal, uh, I don't know, conflict or uh, problems with your member countries, right? For Soviet Asia and Thailand, Thailand is a country where it's different from other countries in Southeast Asia. You will see Indonesia also Muslim, Malaysia the Muslim, Vietnam they are communist country, and Myanmar is just open up a country, and Cambodia is a small country, Laos is a small country, Singapore is a small but advanced country. But and Thailand has 67 million people. And, and Philippines is more like Spanish, right? They're more linked to America or Spain. So Thailand is the first love for you. And you can start from Thailand and go to other countries too, right? So, and, and of course, we are very friendly people. So I think you'll be happy in our country and work out for foreign for investment. Thank you, Professor. One more question? No? So finally, the ambassador was the.
doing business with us. Or if you do not want to be uh, business, uh, just business uh, uh, oriented, you can travel to China, enjoy our country. Um, with those information we provide in, in your library, I hope some of you may have uh, already used that. Um, we have another project to bring the professor here so that we can uh, elaborate more to the points that uh, you are interested. I'm so happy that uh, a lot of questions uh, were asked today. Uh, it's, it means that uh, you are starting to be interested in, in our lecture. So, we also have a third project. You may also know already that we are opening for a, something called Thailand Corner Essay Contest. Since you have the, the Essay Contest, uh, the, the Thailand Corner here, it may be very easy for you to uh, put a little bit of effort and write something about Thailand after you read some materials in, in the library. Well, I hope some of you will be interested. But if you look at the price, I think it's uh, uh, it should be something a little bit more exciting because it's the airfare to Thailand. Um, we have to start from Buenos Aires, of course, because uh, we are based in, in Buenos Aires. But we may consider if you win the ticket, we may extend to Uruguay. So I hope to see some of you. Uh, submit the, the, the essay for, for this occasion. And um, I just talked to uh, Dr. Jacqueline the other day that uh, we may have some additional uh, program in case uh, you're interested at least to see the university or meet with uh, some students over there. Apart from the uh, tourism program that you may have. So, I really hope that you will participate. Um, we have the information available uh, through the internet and the university are already distributed. Um, so, don't be lazy, please. Put a little bit of it, go to the Thailand corner in the library, and see what, what aspect of Thailand do you like, or you want to explore, or you want to expand your knowledge about, and write about it, and see if uh, you can compete with uh, your colleagues. It's open for only undergraduate, I'm sorry, I have to leave it to that, undergraduate student in Uruguay and in Argentina. So, I'm waiting for your uh, essays and hope to see that uh, uh, many students and people here will be interested to participate. Thank you very much. It's not necessary to translate that, no? Concurso de ensayo con el premio de Pilar Catenaria, por las dudas, ¿no? Así que gracias por eso para escribir. I'm translating to something clear for everybody. So, Professor, we, we really appreciate your presence here in the conference. It's really excellent. Uh, so, our university really thank you. And welcome to you and Ambassador again to this university and to work with you. And uh, thank everybody. Y agradezco muy especialmente la atención prestada en el video. Así que gracias a todos y thank you. Thank you.